Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another MBA Spotlight brought to you by the GMAT Club. My name is Ankit Sureka and I'll be your host for the session today. Uh, the MBA Spotlight is where we connect you to the best of the best business schools in the world. And when I say best of the best, I actually mean it. Today on the session, we have UCLA Anderson School of Management and representing the school, we have the Associate Director of Admissions, Mr. John Lee. Hi, John. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John, for taking the time out for doing this. Before we start off with the session, I'd like to remind everyone that we have awesome prizes for all the participants in the session. So please make sure to check out the link on the chat. It should be somewhere here. And uh, you can enter to win awesome goodies from GMAT Club. Also, after the session, we will have a live Q&A, a Zoom breakout room, the link for which will also be shared towards the end of the session. So. All of the viewers who want to spend some more time with John Lee and ask him some questions yourselves directly, please make sure to join the Zoom breakout room. Uh, so how we're going to do the session is that uh, we will have John uh, put up a presentation uh, for all of our viewers. And post the presentation, we'll have a short Q&A. So take it away, John. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining me today to learn more about the UCLA Anderson full-time MBA program. I know there's probably a lot of questions that you may have as you continue doing your research. But I think one of the things that I want to stress is that as you do your research, you'll find that a lot of schools are really similar in terms of curriculum, in terms of like, you know, career outcomes. But, you know, what makes every school different really is their culture and values. So for us, our we have three pillars that we like to stand by. The first being share success. We are a highly collaborative environment uh, where, you know, one person succeeding means the rest of the school succeeds. Uh, we like to think fearlessly in the sense that there are no wrong answers, there are no wrong questions to ask. And, you know, asking these questions or asking these tough questions per se uh, may lead to innovating uh, something different within the tech uh, industry, you know, your consulting outcomes or even uh, creating a new entrepreneurial endeavor and then driving change, right? We want students to who are going to leave uh, UCLA Anderson better than uh, they first got here uh, for future generations. So when we think about the MBA at UCLA Anderson, uh, the first thing we do like to think about is how uh, it's going to change your career, right? And that's a lot of that's the big reason why people come to MBA programs. So here at UCLA Anderson, we have the Parker Career Management Center, which has been the top rated uh, career management center in terms of student satisfaction by The Economist and Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, you know, students come here and they, they take a deep dive into career assessments right away, right, through Parker's three-prong approach. The first is planning. So when you get onto campus, you are working on figuring out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, uh, things that you enjoy, your passions, which will then dictate how you may want to recruit going further, right? Um, your resume is going to be uh, tailored to a specific industry. You'll start uh, interviewing prep uh, for uh, the industries as well. And you really do learn and take a deep dive during this time. Afterwards is the implementation phase. So when you figure out where you want to go, um, we, will they, we will be there to support you through various uh, student-led initiatives, such as the Anderson Career Teams. For example, that's uh, second year students mentoring first year students in terms of like how to network, what the different industries are like, um, and who the key players in those industries are. And it's a, a peer-led program that goes throughout the entire recruiting period uh, with a second year student and likely six or seven of your classmates. Um, uh, the other thing that they do is actually the um, interview prep teams as well, uh, where they will help you and coach you through your behaviors and also your casing. And finally, the third part of their approach is through assessment. So once you hopefully have multiple offers, Parker will guide you in terms of decision making, you know, um, offer negotiation, and whether or not um, this is the right fit for you and continue on with your career. So in terms of our full-time employment for the class of 2020, um, you'll see that we have three pretty big industry outputs, right? We have technology, which is about 32% of the class, consulting, which is 25% of the class, and finance, about 14% of the class. However, we don't like to think of ourselves as a tech school or a consulting school. We like to think of ourselves as a school that's a jack of all trades. We like to have industry diversity and and we like to have our students go into different places. I think that's what makes the classroom environment very dynamic and also what makes it a really collaborative environment. So you'll see that students also go into CPG, for example, entertainment, healthcare, real estate, energy, and utilities. Um, there's also diversity in functions. So you know the top three functions for the class of 2020 was management consulting, corp fin, and product management. But then you'll also see that there are other functions that they go into. The class of 2020 actually had 30 different functions um, 
that they went into after graduation. And these are just some of the MBA employers that come onto campus for on-campus recruiting. Um, you'll see some pretty big players here in terms of consulting, tech, finance, CPG, um, but this is not at all exhaustive list, right? There, there's over 150 that come onto campus, but then there are also uh, off-campus recruiting opportunities for those who uh, wish to pursue that path instead. So one of the great things about coming to school in Los Angeles is limitless access, right? We like to think of that as, as a um, acronym for LA. Um, the reason why we think it is limitless is because that it is the world's 16th largest economy that you are coming into. You're coming to a diverse global city that has over 140 countries represented and 86 languages spoken. Plus, you're also a thriving uh, small and medium business scene with over 300,000 um, entrepreneurial businesses uh, running across um, the Los Angeles Basin. So another reason why it's great is um, you're in a city where you can do academic internships during the school year. Uh, you are going to be very, you'll have a lot of access to informational interviews, uh, which will then lead to just more access to networking. And it's very, and it's very possible to have execs come onto campus to co-teach classes or guest speak because they are just right um, across the street from, from where UCLA is in Westwood or in, at least in downtown Los Angeles. Um, we also like to think that, you know, we have a really great alumni base um, that's global. We have over 41,000 alumni spread across 75 uh, plus country. Back when uh, we used to be able to recruit uh, on the, like outside globally, uh, I oversaw East Asia and Southeast Asia recruitment trips. And anytime I went uh, abroad, I was able to get alumni to be on panel and they really do enjoy talking about their experiences and meeting with potential students. Um, you'll see that some these are three of our uh, more prominent alumni alumni. There are definitely many, but we have Susan Rojecki, uh, uh, CEO of YouTube, Andy Campion, the CEO of Nike, and Rosie O'Neill, who is a co-founder and general partner of Pure Imagination Brands, uh, and also uh, the founder of Sugarfina Candies. So after talking about your uh, career, we want to talk a little bit about our cur curriculum in terms of like the studies that you'll be doing to enhance your, uh, your future career. You'll see that the first year schedule is very core heavy, uh, but once after you finish the first year, your uh, schedule will become more flexible. You'll see that the spring is when the electives really come into play. Um, and then your entire second year, for example, will be electives with the exception of the capstone project, which I'll talk about later, and also the communications for leaders part two. Um, but again, this is probably one of the more flexible MBA programs that you can possibly attend. And additionally, a lot of uh, optional academic internships can happen during this time. And you can also take electives outside of UCLA Anderson to count towards your degree by being a part of the UCLA ecosystem. So if you want to deepen your knowledge in certain areas, we have 15 optional specializations that account to 115 elective courses that you can choose from during your time at UCLA Anderson. You do not have to actually do a specialization. Most students will do two, just because if we gave you 115 elective courses, this would kind of give you a guidance in terms of how you structure your classes. But um, again, you do not have to, they are optional. And once again, you do have the option to take three electives at another UCLA school for MBA degree credit. So I talked about capstone project earlier. There are two major capstone projects that students pursue. The first is uh, AMR, so Applied Management Research. It is your more traditional capstone project where it's a consulting project that you and your, your team will help a business solve a real world problem. And the second is the BCO option, so the business creation option. It's gotten a lot more popular as the years have gone by just because it really provides a safe space for students to um, help launch a help a another student or classmate launch a uh, a business plan or you know it's something that they want to pursue and have experience doing while they're in in school so these are just some capstone projects example the first the more traditional amr uh was uh an at t and dish network project where um when they wanted to uh see how they can uh, add a streaming service into their into um, their portfolio of programs. The second is uh, K-pop Sauce, which was a BCO project. Uh, it was it actually won a um, a Kickstarter um, goal that successfully launched eight hours later, and now it's actually across 
different supermarkets in the Los Angeles area, such as Bristow Farms. And finally, you have a more uh, international AMR project. So these are uh, consulting projects abroad. Um, and this one is an example of a nonprofit project uh, that explore reducing the environmental impact of communal farmers in Africa. There are other alternate options that students do uh, as well, such as the Student Investment Fund, the Real Estate Challenge, Asset Management Fund, and ASG, uh, the Anderson Strategy Group. But this pretty much only makes up those make up 10%, whereas um, your AMR or BCO options are about 90% of what the students do. Um, hopefully, we'll also have the, internet, the opportunity to have international exposure uh, once we uh, see COVID behind us. Uh, and there is an international requirement that all students have to uh, partake in. And there can be done in a couple of certain ways. The first is the international capstone that I talked about. The second is going to be international electives for those who do, do not want to necessarily go abroad. They can take an elective such as global strategy or global management. Uh, or global marketing, things of that nature. And then there's also global immersions that students can pursue. So for example, that would be going to learning about Japan, for example, going uh, learning about their business uh, environment, learning about their culture, and then spending a week on site visiting different companies. And finally, student-led trips. So these will not actually count towards the international requirements that students must meet, but um, it is kind of a, a thing that people will do where students, uh, especially the international students, will help lead a group of their classmates to different trips. Um, we actually have one coming up to Mexico in the past. Uh, every year during spring break, students will go to either Israel or Japan. So I talked about fit earlier on during this presentation. Um, I will kind of explore a little bit deeper into what that really means. So outside of, we are a very student-led environment, right? So student-led, student-driven, highly collaborative. And that really starts with our 50 clubs and associations that range from um, professional to identity to um, interest. And why that's so important, it's because the clubs really do lead a lot of the student uh, life on campus. So for example, they put on some of the industry conferences, right? So um, the Retail Business Association would put on the Evolve Conference. Um, the uh, Investment Finance Association would do the FIC, FINC conference. So these are things that uh, students do for other students. Um, the average student actually is a part of eight different clubs and hold leadership roles in three. So we really are looking for students who really want to be a part of that process and really help their students uh, achieve success. Uh, then there's also case competitions. Volunteering is a big part of our community, uh, our fabric. Um, of our culture. Uh, last year, the entire UCLA Anderson School uh, had over 5,000 volunteer hours. Um, and finally, with Dean Speaker Series and Student Government, which uh, will impact your day-to-day -day life here at Anderson. So just some of the extracurricular benefits of joining UCLA Anderson or an MBA in general really is like network building, right? You get to meet students from across, uh, classmates from across industries, across cultures, and really expand your network that way uh, domestically and globally. There's leadership experience. You'll have many different opportunities to lead teams uh, during your time uh, at your MBA. You'll have interest development, socializing and having fun. Um, you know, being a full-time MBA student really does uh, give you the opportunity to really dive deep and immerse into uh, MBA culture. Um, and then finally, career support and exploration, which uh, we talked about earlier with Parker, uh, with the Parker Career Center. Diversity and inclusion actually is also another big uh, part of our Anderson culture. We do this through external partnerships. Um, which I'll mention later in a bit. Uh, some, a lot of clubs will have conferences and fire, fireside chat devoted to uh, ED and I. Um, and then we also have our identity clubs where students um, can network and support one another um, I, through their identity memberships or as an ally. Uh, and one of the great parts about going to UCLA Anderson is actually I'm going to school at UCLA. Right, we are a global brand with over 290 research center. Uh, every year we've been the most popular college in the U.S. to apply to. Um, those of you who are not aware of Division I sports uh, and athletics, it's actually a big part of UCLA culture as well. And again, you also have access to UCLA courses and joint degrees. So applying to Anderson, uh, we do have three deadlines for the class of 2024. The round one deadline had just passed and we're actually in the middle of reviewing and interviewing those applicants right now. You'll see that there's also a round two and round three deadline um, that's coming up. 
In terms of like, you know, students always asking which round should they apply in, we say that round one and round two is actually equal. There are, it's not, um, there's no advantage one way over another. Where it does get a little bit more competitive is round three because we only are uh, taking 360 students in any given year. So by the time round three comes around, there's typically only about 40 slots left to fill with a couple hundred applications. Um, so applying early is always best, but if you think that you um, need to increase your certain score, you're waiting for a promotion, for example, or you really just can't seem to get the essay right, then we say always apply when your application's at its best, even if that means round three. Uh, in terms of application requirements, it's pretty typical of a lot of schools. I want to I want to note that um, we do not waive um, our application fee or our GMAT, GRE, or TOEFL or IELTS scores. Um, however, we do have text flexibility in the sense that we don't, um, you can choose whichever test you want to take. So you can either take the GMAT or the GRE, uh, and if you're an international student, you take the TOEFL or the IELTS, um, but you must take one or the other. And then the other thing to note is that uh, interviews are by invitation only, um, and they're done by second year students. Uh, really, it's just conversational, and they're at that point assessing uh, fit and, and culture. So what do the admissions committee look for? Um, you know, really is a holistic process. It's not something that we say would be like 25% across the board that equals to like 100. We will look at everything from your academics, which means your test scores, your GPA, um, the major uh, trends and grades in terms of upward trends or downward trends, uh, classes that you took. We'll also look at your career in terms of progression and career impact and also transferable skills because a lot of you, uh, especially 95% of you, will be looking to either uh, pivot functions or industry post MBA. We look at activities because we want to make sure that uh, our, given that we are a student-led environment, that um, students who come into Anderson will continue that culture of giving back and then also making sure that um, there's also fit there as well in terms of being collaborative um, and, and, and wanting to help your fellow classmates succeed. So this is the class of 2023 profile. So this is the incoming class from uh, that just started this August in person. Um, so we're really excited about that, that we were able to have that back after spending a year virtual. Again, target class size 360, average GMAT 714 with a range of 670 and 750, and 3.5 is the average GPA. We actually do not convert to GPA. So if you are not coming from a, a 4.0 school, um, we will just use the the GPA that your country uses to determine um, your academic profile. So financing your MBA, we know that an MBA is expensive, uh, but Anderson uh, is able to help mitigate some of that cost. So we awarded $17.8 million in fellowships uh, in the 2020-2021 uh, academic year. And these fellowships, uh, we like to call them fellowships if they're actually scholarships. They are merit-based fellowships, so they, they will take into account your work history, your academic history, your GMAT scores, et cetera. Um, we also do have student loans that um, that the financial aid team can help you secure. Um, and then uh, towards your second year, you will be able to apply for teaching assistantships or research assistantships. So to find out more about us uh, after this, after you uh, finish watching this, um, there's multiple ways to connect with us. You can meet us uh, through our multiple virtual events that we're having right now, led by our students, such as coffee chats or information sessions. Um, you can read about us on our website, our MBA Insider blog, through our social media channels. Um, definitely check out our employment report. Um, we will continue hosting uh, virtual events throughout uh, the winter quarter, so you can definitely learn more about us if you're not local to LA. We are hope hoping to uh, have more to start our in-person events again come 2022. We're just not really sure what that's going to look like yet, but stay tuned for that. Um, for that news. And we also have a bunch of third party partners that we work with. So um, if you happen to uh, like GMAT Club, so if events like that is also another great way to get to know us. And with that being said, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me. That was very insightful, John. Thank you so much for that. Uh, is it okay if we start off with a quest Q&A? Uh, yes. Let me just stop my screen share. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Since you mentioned you just got done with round one of the applications, could you talk about what the general trend has been? Any statistics that you can share? What the feedback of the candidates has been or of the of the applicants? 
Yeah. So in terms of like the gender trend, um, we, you know, we actually made strides to try to close the uh, parity gap um, through the past couple of years. So I know like in 2018, when I first started at Anderson, um, that what we were at 32 percent uh, women on campus. And we had mm -hmm. increased that to up to 42% in the most recent incoming class. So we're really proud of that. Uh, we definitely hope to keep it at that level because we want to make sure that there's also gender gender diversity uh, across the classroom. And then I forgot mm -hmm. the second part of your question, if you don't mind repeating that. Yeah. So uh, what would you say is your feedback about the sort of applicants that are applying? Are they stronger this year or the, the quality of the applicants applying? Yeah, yeah, I want to say I don't, you know, I don't think the quality is that different than previous years. I feel like a lot of people, pandemic or non-pandemic, always mm -hmm. had this kind of five-year plan, right? Like that that at this point, yeah. at this point of the career, they are going to get an MBA regardless of, you know, what the um what the industry or what the global situation was like. And we saw that uh during mm -hmm. the COVID year and even last year and even this upcoming cycle that um, mm -hmm. The applicants are just as strong, at least in round one. Um, they mm -hmm. have similar work experience in the sense that they have about five years of on average of experience. Um, and that mm -hmm. that makes sense, right, in terms of that timeline that we're yeah. looking at, at and that they're looking at. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, since you get so many applications coming in, uh, what would you say is the biggest red flag that the admissions team at UCLA finds in the applications? Or what would you say is a complete... Uh, no, no, in an application that you don't want to see. Yeah, I would say like, you know, some of the red flags that uh, I've been noticing uh, that I notice and catch really early on is an inconsistent story. So that's all, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make sure that your application, the story makes sense from uh, from beginning to end, right? And what I mean by inconsistent story really is that um, your essays and your short-term goal, for example, might not reflect where you have been, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of your your um, your resume and I can't quite see it. Uh, or like the recommender may say something different about what is it that you want to do. So you want to make sure that that's consistent, right? That your recommender, for example, is aware of why you want to go to business school. You know, they understand uh, why you're choosing to go to a particular business school and then what your career mm -hmm. outcomes are looking to be. That way, you know, when you're telling a story, it actually fits in. Um, another mm -hmm. way to describe inconsistent story is like your short term goal makes no sense with your long term goal. So that that's a big connection point that students need to yeah. make sure that they make. Um, that way, we're not sitting here thinking like, that made, I don't understand how they went from that to that. Um, another thing about another way to describe inconsistency is just really a generic essay. That's very inconsistent as well, right? Yeah. If you tell them, mm -hmm. if you say in certain parts of the application that this was like your dream school, but your essay reads very generic and really makes no mm -hmm. kind of mention about how Anderson will help you get from point A to point B, um, that's mm -hmm. also another way to describe inconsistency. Yeah, like that, that makes sense. Awesome. All right. Uh, there's this, this is my favorite question that I love asking is that, and I want your personal opinion on this, John, is that what would you say makes Anderson unique in comparison to other business schools, uh, not just across the US, but across the world? Yeah, I think, you know, in terms of what makes us unique is really the people. And I think you have to, in order to really understand what I mean by that, you do have to talk mm -hmm. to our students, right? So mm -hmm. uh, when I say like share success, drive change and think fearlessly, that is something that our students all live by. And they will mm -hmm. definitely, um, you'll definitely hear it when they say it. And then I think mm -hmm. once you hear them say it, you'll understand that if this place really makes sense for me as as a potential Anderson student and, and be part of the Ander fam as they like to call themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Ander fam, is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Thank you, John. That's that's all the time we have here for the for the YouTube session. Uh, it was really, really fun talking to you. Your presentation was very insightful and I'm sure our viewers learned a lot more from your presentation and the conversation that we've had than they could learn from the website. So thank you for taking the time out for doing this, John. All right, thank and, you. And to all the viewers, please do not go away. We have a breakout Zoom breakout room now where you can get a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, question and answer session with John himself. Uh, the link for that would be in the chat right here. I think I have it right this time. It should be right there. And uh, there are also goodies for our viewers. So to participate in that, the link for that will also be shared in the chat. So thank you all for coming in and, and do take care of yourself. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye, everyone.